All right, I'm on my training mat today, and we're going to be going over parachuting and uh, the basics of how to navigate while falling out of the sky. A few things you're going to need, obviously steerable parachute, micro dagger, any sort of GPS that will let you bring up these GPS panels, and an altimeter watch. So first we're going to talk about how to set a waypoint in your micro dagger using self-interact as you saw there you bring up configure micro dagger and this is the screen you're presented with there are two ways to create a marker one is up here mark and then you type in the grid coordinates and hit ok we're not going to do that today because it's a bit more difficult uh, the second method is to click on the map here and clicking on it a second time brings back your textures here as you can see I'm going to select the power plant as my landing position and with a double click it'll add this you can name your waypoint I never do I just hit OK set waypoint you will be presented with this compass screen now there are four numbers presented well technically five but four numbers that are important to us first is your actual bearing as you can see that changes when I move around second is your target bearing which is in the bottom left that's the red 6.3 that also corresponds with the compass as you can see there next is my speed now this is linear speed in the X and Y direction so there's no Z movement accounted or very little Z movement accounted as you can see when I jump it does register because I'm moving forward but when I'm moving like this there's no you know it's not accounting for this change in altitude here it's just accounting for my speed that I'm running that's kind of important once you're up in the air next the bottom right number is your distance to the target so as you can see we're 1.045 clicks out from the target those are the three important number or the four important numbers and that's pretty much all you need your micro dagger for Next is the altimeter watch. You bring that up with O, or whatever you set your watch keybind for. So there's only one important number here, and that's the center number. As you can see, we're 26 meters above sea level, and that becomes important when you're jumping, say, in the mountains. As you see here, this mountain is 105 meters above sea level at its highest point, and that means that on this, you could read 205 meters and think that you're 205 meters from the ground when in reality you're anywhere from 100 meters above the ground to you know maybe that 205 meters and that quickly becomes important when you're jumping at night and can hardly see the ground if you hit the left bracket it'll bring up this panel here this is your GPS position as you can see when I move it shows you that Um, there's maybe two numbers on the GPS that are important and that's the third number from the left and the fourth number from the left the third number is your current compass bearing and it updates a lot more quickly than the micro dagger as you can see when I turn my head and the fourth is a six digit grid of your current position um, that can be important for milsims where they have your location turned off on the map since this is a training map I have obviously adjusted the difficulty settings to allow me to see myself on the map so we're falling obviously we're 1500 meters up or 1400 now as our altimeter watch presents um, and that speed in the top there that is purely our speed towards the ground as you can see as I adjust my direction it's not really changing based on my linear speed because as you can see in the right there on my micro dagger my linear speed is increasing to 52 kph but that speed isn't accounted up for at the top all right so you just jumped out of your aircraft and you've never parachuted before in arma what are the important bits well as you can see me turning my head does nothing it's not like walking around the way you control the direction in which you're heading is with your A and D keys. Next is W and S. These change, obviously, your speed forward and backwards. Uh, this is assuming there's no jump target at the moment. I'm just demonstrating 
you know, how to do the basics here. Now in Ace, there is the possibility that your shoot can fail, and those are set server side by your uh, server admin or Zeus. Um, that's kind of important because if you're doing a halo jump where you need to open quite low to the ground, you'll only have a few seconds, not a few seconds, a few milliseconds really to realize that your shoot has failed and to pull your reserve. Now I don't have that turned on today, but I can simulate it by cutting my parachute uh, using ace. And so at this point, I'm gonna pull my shoot. And let's simulate that my shoot has failed. We're gonna cut my shoot, and you see we have a reserve. I'm gonna pull that, and uh, that successfully, uh, you know, opens my parachute. And so we aim back towards the halo flag here. And there's a bit of wind pushing me laterally to the right. And I've landed. Alright, so navigating at night with a halo jump. We're going to hit the button. First thing you can tell, the night vision is utterly useless up here. Uh, in fact, I prefer jumping at night with no night vision on uh, this altitude because the stars sort of help you orientate yourself as well as light sources on the ground. We're up in the air now. Assume we just jumped out of an aircraft. Uh, we're going to need to orient ourselves. As you can see, turning my head is sort of a false, sort of a false um, suggestion of where I might be traveling. So if I've never done this before, if I turn my head that way and start holding W, obviously we're traveling in a different direction from what my head is facing, and that is something that you know, catches out a lot of parachutists on their first go. So what you're going to need to do is orient your body. See on the left there how the third number in the GPS is changing as I do A and D? You're going to want that third number to align with the number on the compass, roughly. See how even I, I got a bit confused there? because uh, you're jumping at night you don't really have anything to orient yourself except your devices so once that number aligns you see we're sort of going for a four then you hold W and you'll start traveling in the direction that you set and as you can see the bottom right number on our micro dagger is decreasing as we get closer to our target zone and as you can see if you turn your head a bunch you might get disoriented at night, it's very important that you try to keep your head aligned with your direction of travel. We're directly over our drop zone, so we can sort of slow down our forward speed with a few taps of S, as you can see. And uh, we sort of just come the rest of the way down. And if you want, now that you're aligned with your target, you can close your micro dagger and you can close your GPS too. Uh, clear some clutter from the screen. Now if your target is illuminated, uh, like the power plant, you obviously don't need night vision for a nighttime jump um, as much as you would. But if it's not illuminated, like say a grass field, you would need night vision as a crucial part to find that target. Now the latest I like to open my parachute is about 200 meters AGL. Below that, you're kind of risking a shoot failure killing you because uh, obviously, as you can see there, we didn't have a lot of distance between me and the ground. And then you safely come to the ground and you've made it next on the agenda, how to fly a parachute. So you can see we're in our steerable parachute now. So, you've just opened your parachute, how do you control it? Well, A and D, as you can see, they change your orientation. It's a lot like um, free falling, as you can see. Holding A just spins me in a circle in the left direction. And holding D spins me in a circle in the right direction. Now W obviously increases your forward speed. S increases your backward speed. But keep in mind, you'll always go faster. As you get close to the ground in your parachute, you're going to want to keep in mind a few things so you don't get injured on the way down. And one is that you're going to try to nullify your speed on the X and Y axis. 
Uh, this is especially important when wind becomes a factor. And when we get close to touching down, you're going to want to pull in the opposite direction that you're being pushed by the wind or assuming you're trying to make a target like this. So as you can see, pulling a bit in the opposite direction, we're trying to nullify that speed. And when we come out of it, we will have no injuries as long as you nullify that speed. That's especially important. You don't want broken legs uh, after parachuting into enemy lines. I hope this was educational for those of you that struggle to parachute, and uh, have a good day.